support us on Patreon to get access to member-exclusive benefits and first dibs on the latest Manchester United news. Okay, yeah, there we go. Sorry. Sorry about that, everyone. Okay, we're back. We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. So, um, match ratings now. Um, uh, sorry, before I go into match ratings, talk about David De Gea. Uh, this, this, he's beginning to become a fraud, David De Gea. Um, Don Ragnar says, there was better combination between Lindelof and Small and the Lindelof and Maguire. Um, the 80 million on Maguire, I would have spent on midfield. That is a that is match comment. In fact, I'm going to retweet that comment after this stream is done. People saying that Chris Morning was banter. Phil Jones will always be banter. They've got no doubt about that. But Chris Morning and Lindelof actually had a better partnership than Maguire and, and Lindelof. I, I can't see the chemistry between Maguire and Lindelof at all. I cannot. And we don't even use Maguire's, Maguire to his strength. Anyway, let, let, me, let me go on. Let, let, let me just go on to this to the, to the match ratings here. So De Gea, De Gea for me gets, he gets a four. Um... And that's not based on his previous spillage um, against um, against Everton, where he should have done better. Against Watford, where he should have done better. And now against here, where he should have done better. He's had there's been three instances where, like I would argue, you could argue if he's if he if he's done a bit better, if he's been a bit stronger against Everton. Yes, you got to foul, but we go 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 down. We could win that game again. Watford game uh, where it's um, where where. Where one one nil again, David De Gea error two nil basically kills the game. Arsenal again one nil quick. Okay, we need to build momentum to get back into the game. David De Gea error, not just David De Gea but our defense, and we're two nil down. David De Gea, um, David De Gea has saved us a lot, and I agree, he saved us a lot, especially if we look at the last game. We look at Burnley, but we're talking Burnley here. Now we're praising David De Gea for saving us against small teams. But I'm looking at what about what is David De Gea saving us against the big teams, the top teams when we need him? He's he's we're, we're dropping we dropped a lot of points with him and I'm not taking it all out on David De Gea, but to be honest, I think that we need competition. He's gone for so long without competition. He wants to leave the club, get Romero in to give him some competition, or better yet, even recall Dean Henderson, who's at Sheffield United, who's kept more clean sheets this season, by the way, guys. Dean Henderson at Sheffield United who's actually on loan from Manchester United. I'm surprised United haven't recorded him as collect more clean sheets than David De Gea, much more clean sheets than David De Gea this season. And let that sink in. So David De Gea for me gets gets a four, you know, so it, it just awful. Um this guy gets a three. Um Ham Maguire is 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 um he needs time to settle. But at this moment in time he he's almost like an eighty million fraud. Um, he's he's becoming more and more fraud. I I, I don't try and judge players when they're first team because I think a lot of United fans were, for example, on Fred's back in the first season. Oh, what can Fred do? Oh, Fred is useless. Blah 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 blah. Um, but actually, this season now everyone loves Fred. So for me, I don't like to be hypercritical of players who in their first season at Manchester United they need time to settle down, they need time to impress, they need time to go forward. Um, and this is Maguire's first season. However, with Fred, you could argue that Fred was in and out of the team, which he was. He never got a consistent run of games. Now that he's got a consistent run of games, he's looking quite good. Maguire's had a consistent run of games and has looked worse and worse and worse. Um, oh, by the way, guys, get involved in the comments. Get involved if you want me to read out comments and stuff like that. Get involved in the comments in the chat. Appreciate it. Um, Maguire has not improved coming to Manchester United at all. And this is why I'm giving him a free. Um, we won't, to be fair, we don't utilise him to his strengths. We don't cross the ball that much. We don't use his head. Um, but defensively, do we sort of shoot over Maguire? Exactly. And you could see that he's not strengthened our defence and Leicester look fairly comfortable without him, which is interesting. Um, has he actually improved? No, he's regressed. And looking at the, the two goals that we concede... Um, today, I'm looking at this the captain, because he's, he's apparently our captain now, having just arrived at the club. Where is where is the leadership here? Where is the organisation? Okay, where are you shouting and calling, Luke Shaw, come back, come back, cover the space. Why are there two Arsenal players just free that can just 
kick the ball into the battle net? What's going on? Where are they? In the set, in 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 the in the in the uh, in the, the the cross for the corner. Why aren't people marking? Um, um, sure, make sure that you sort of where is nothing, and the chemistry between Lindelof and Maguire seems to be off. They don't seem to be really knowing what they're doing with each other. There's no so no. Um, Maguire has to improve, and because this is his first season, um, you you you're like right, okay. I, I don't want to be too critical, but if Twan CB was if Twan CB was fit. If Twan C was sick, which he's not, and it's so annoying that Twan C is injured again, but if he was fit, Twan C B goes straight into this this back line without a shadow of a doubt. Um Lindelof. Um I'll give Lindelof um I'll give Lindelof a a, a, a five. Um no a four. I'll give him Lindelof a four. Um it wasn't his fault, argue that the ball deflected off his foot. He couldn't really do much about it. Just like he couldn't do much about the own goal. So you can't really criticise him for those. Um, but he he was just being schooled today. Um, he was being schooled. But I don't think it helps when you have a... When you're rudderless. Lindelof, for me, is like Smalling. In a sense that you put Lindelof with a very good um, defender... Um, a very tenacious defend, a defender, a defender who can win the ball now, who's dominant, who's commanding. If you put Lindelof next to Van Dijk, he'll be great. You put Lindelof next to Phil Jones, he'll be trash. You put Lindelof next to Maguire, he's going to be trash. You put Lindelof next to Small, it will be not. It'll be they'll be average. Smalling, sorry, you know. So um, this is the thing of Lindelof, and is it? But I guess the question is: Is it Lindelof per se? Because I think he's a good ball playing defender. We play actually playing to his strengths, or is it? That we um that we can't coach Lindelof into a better defender. I think it's a combination of the two. Um, just reading some of your comments now. And Michael Watson, Maguire is clunky, he's struggling bad. It looks like Matic. He's that slow. I agree. We have no pace in that back line at all. Bar Wan Bissaka, arguably, um, and Fred. Um, Yashwan Banshee. United lost the moment Arsenal score. One dimension vision counter. Only no tactics, no style. Absolutely agree with that. Um. It just it's just stupid. Um it's it's we we you can see the difference. Arteta has only been for Arsenal for I think was it three games? And you can already see the complete and total difference in this in the squad in, in how Arsenal actually play. Pressure tactically switched on. All of all the um front four come back and defend like their lives. United Don Magna, Fred is a Brazilian that came over from Shakhtar needed time to adapt to Premier League. His password didn't protect him or criticism like it does for Sean McGuire and Lingard. I absolutely, we're going to get to Lingard in a second, to be honest, but let me move on. Wambasaka, Wambasaka for me, um, I don't think he had his his, his, his best game, um, but his, 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 he still gets a, I'd say he still gets a six Wambasaka um, because um, he was, he didn't get a lot of help. On his right and on his right hand side, I agree. I think also I I I confess Wambasaka looks tired. I don't blame him because he's not had really any um rest over the December breaks, not had any real cover. Um but he still managed to do his defensive duties, mostly. Um yes, okay, he the the ball came in from his side, but you could argue it was the left hand side that was a problem. And frankly, for most of the game, it was our left hand side. It was the side that I'm sure that, that they exposed. They knew that they couldn't get around Wambasaka most of the time. A few times they did, I'm not gonna lie. But most of Arsenal's um issues came down our left hand side because we weren't because Luke Shaw. So Wambasaka, I don't think he had a great game, um, but I give him I give him I give Wambasaka a a, a a six performance, you know. Um Okay, now we come on to fraud. Not who I call well fraud number two. I call Maguire fraud number one. This is fraud number two. Luke Shaw. Um, there's no excuse for Luke Shaw now. Um, for me, if I'm if I'm Ollie and I'm not Ollie, you drop Shaw and you play um, Brandon Williams and you let Brandon Williams develop at left back and see what you get. That for me is what you do, because Luke Shaw since his comeback has looked unfit. He he's 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 not the player that he he was if he ever was, and for me, he be he's back up. You you play Brandon Williams may will make. In fact, we know Brandon Williams will make plenty of mistakes. He's gonna make plenty of mistakes, but he's a kid. He can develop. He can go. Assuming the coaching is actually good, which which is which right now is quite dubious. Um, but he can he can develop. 
I don't want to see Luke Shaw as a first team starter anymore. To be honest, um, he had a terrible. Luke Shaw gets a one for me today. He had a terrible game. He was compl- he wasn't switched on. Neither him nor Matic were switched on um, for the first goal. And for most of the game, um, when Arsenal did have the ball, they would come down on left hand side. Luke Shaw would be up the pitch, and fair enough, he's pushing on the field as a fullback. He should push up the push up the pitch, but I think defensively. He just was not sound today. Was not sound. Guys, there's 21 people watching the stream. And thank you so much for watching the stream. But we need to at least get to at least 10, 12 likes. So please, please, please like. If anyone wants five likes, something like that, guys. So please, 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 please like the vid. Like the vid. Like the vid. Need to get to at least. Let's get to at least 10 likes or something, guys. Come on with double the people watching the vid. Come on. Let's let's get let's get those likes up. Um, Just reading some of your comments now. Um... Um, uh, Don Ragnar, if Aaron Bissaka is not coached in Premier United to be more effective going forward, and I can only see him as a centre back on the right side as part of a back three. That's fair. fair that's fair enough. Um, Yashwan Bashani, Luke Shaw has regressed very average. He's more than regressed to be honest. And Ragnar says Shaw is one of the highest paid left back in the world. Shaw out, rotate Dallo and, and Williams at um, a left back. I agree. You know, although Dallo seems to be, be be, I don't know what is going on with, with Manchester United's fitness department because. To have Dallo, to have um, uh, Fred Pogba, um, Twan Seam, and all these players that are injured is 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 we we always have this problem, and the fact the board don't rec- seem to recognise it is is we should have a thirty man squad to be honest in order to rectify um, in order to rectify this problem. Um, let's move on, Matic. Um, Matic can get a four, I think, for me. Um, I think that certainly, I think he was at fault for the first. I don't know why he was standing, not doing anything, just watching as as the first goal. He's tall as well, so I don't know why he, he, he why um, we 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 could see that second goal from the corner. I don't know. Um, I don't think he was the worst player in the field, and I think there were key opportunities where he was passing the ball forward, trying to push forward, uh, laying, laying the ball off, and 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 doing okay. Um, but Matic doesn't particularly have pace to come back. We were being outnumbered um, and getting caught on the break, and he didn't really help out in the defence particularly, if I'm honest. Um, good going forward, didn't help us particularly. Um, so, um, yeah, Matic, um, Matic gets, 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 a, gets a fourth for me, um, but... Matic is gonna. Matic wanted to leave in January, don't you guys know? You know he wants to leave. We're saying Deadwood FC needs to go, but the reality is we can't sell Matic in January now, and he can't go in January because if Pogba's injured for goodness knows how long, if um, Tommy is injured for two months, you know we only have two functioning midfielders in Fred and McTominay. Uh, sorry, Fred and Matt uh, Matic, and Fred and Matic are going to be playing games. I mean, think of it this way: who's going to be playing against? Um, Wolves the weekend, it's gonna be the same squad, isn't it? We don't have a midfield. We don't have a midfield to rotate, so it's gonna be the same squad. You might be able to bring in Williams in for for for, for Luke Shaw, um, and maybe you might Francini might be fit by then. So I mean to bring, but that's about it. Well, or maybe Greenwood comes on for the start, and we'll get we'll get we'll get to why why we'll get to about Greenwood. We'll talk about Lingard in a second. Um, but anyway, Matic gets gets a, gets a four for me. He gets a four. Um. Manchester United, um, Ronaldo's eyeing moot to Old Trafford after Juventus in 2020. I highly doubt that. I highly doubt that. And if that's the real Manchester United, stop spreading horrible gossip. Uh, you paying for club, Fred. Um, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna be generous. I'm gonna give Fred a seven because Fred for me was the only player in that. F- I think he was United's man of the match. Um, he's gone from strength to strength, and like Don Ragnar I think said, if he was under a better coach, Fred would actually have. Um, blossomed into like an Akante or or a um, Makaleli or some sort of player. He's he's our most talented player right now in our midfield with a midfield that lacks creativity. He could easily have been the Herrera replacement in terms of box to box kind of thing, but he's basically being used as a as, as a holding midfielder um and and Oli just doesn't not for me seem to be able to coach this this guy. Um and and it's it's funny because even when he Oli came to the club, he wasn't picking Fred. He didn't feel for he didn't feel for Fred. You know, I don't know what is wrong with our manager because if you you see the creativity that Fred brings, and you're like, you know what, we want we want to get Sean Longstaff. 
you know, Sean Longstaff, guys. United were linked heavily in the summer of getting Sean Longstaff. Sean Longstaff. That's the caliber of midfielder that United are going for. Sean Longstaff, who was who we bantered when when they came to, to Old Trafford, and whose brother, I would argue, Matty is even better than Sean. That's the kind of a player that we want. And for me, that's that, that, that that's a subtle sign that tells me that I just don't well know whether Solskjaer knows what he's doing. Whether he just wants a British Brexit contingent um, of players that will somehow take us back to the glory days of, of a Sir Alex Ferguson. Those glory days are gone. And right now, we're, we're, with, this, with, the de- with this decade approaching, we're in danger of becoming, like Arsenal Football Club, um, a team that won trophies in a bygone era but now can no longer compete with the emergence of your Liverpools, your cities, and now your Leicesters. Um, but Fred, Fred for me gets 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 at least a solid seven. Uh, moving on, um, Dan James, um, Dan James, Dan James gets a five. I don't think Dan James, but but a lot of it, a lot of the issue with the likes of Dan James and our front, our four, our four men, um, a lot of it is based on the fact that we. Um, they didn't have any space to run. You know, how we're playing, how social seems to play is that if we have space to run into, it'll be great. Dan James's looks great, looks amazing when we have space to run into. Looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, but when there's no space to run into, then he beca- looks quite average. Um, so, uh, you know, I'll be... I, I, he... he um, he had a poor game, I confess. Like he had a poor game, but I, I, I think a part of Daniel James' game. We want to remember that this is also Daniel James's first season, nineteen from Swansea. And to be honest, when we signed him, I actually thought when we signed Daniel James, it was more of like a potential, a future signing. It was like a, oh, um, in the future we'll have him for the future. Um, you know, we'll have him for this for the future. You know, and then or he'll come into the team. I didn't expect Dan James to basically just be thrown into the first team, um, and to be a regular first team player at all. I thought we would get at, at least, let alone on the right wing. When uh, when again, Daniel James's position, his position, his favorite position is left winger. And and United have yet. We I don't know why. When if you want to play four two three one, why United have not gone to sign a right winger. If you saw the poll that I produ- uh, produ- uh, I I posted on this channel, and I I saw a lot of polls in terms of the best United players of the last decade, um, the only right wingers that United have had in the last ten years were Adnan Yanazai, Wilfred Zaha, and well, let's say let's put in Jesse Lingard into that. That's that's that 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 that's it because Jesse Lingard is playing a bit. Jesse Lingard is not really so. If you take those out, it's Adnan Yanazai and Wilfred Zaha before he left. I take Wilfred Zaha back in a heartbeat if I'm if I'm perfectly honest. Um, if if there's a wiring that gets signed, if if United sign Wilfred Zaha and Grealish in a transfer window, and um, I don't know as a forward, um, maybe Cantwell, Cantwell, Grealish, Zaha, and then um. Maybe Callum Wilson or something. To be honest, I'm happy because at least that fills those fills the positions that we need, and we can get a, a good coach in later down the line who can develop them. Who knows? Um, but I, I, yeah, Daniel James gets a five. Um, I just think that um, with better coaching, be better. He didn't have a great game, um, so five. Let's let 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 let's move on. Zero. Um, at zero. I, I know that Lingard has had, has had issues. I know Lingard has had tons of issues at home. Um, he's had a lot of issues. Um, and because of that, I don't, this is, this is not anything personal. So I don't want anyone to get on this, that this is a personal, um, attack on Jesse Lingard. However, this is a man who is in our start in our starting lineup, and I think Pereira, Pereira is not any better. But at least Pereira has had assists in twenty nineteen. Jesse Lingard 
has zero goals and zero assists in 2019. Why is he starting? I mean, yes, you could argue, we could we could say the whole thing about Lingard Stadium. There was no Lingard Stadium today at all. He played in the, in the coveted number 10 position and was not able to create anything. Um, we needed Pogba. And I said Pogba is a creator. Lingard couldn't create anything. If we don't have a creator number 10, we need to go out and get a creator number 10. Jesse Lingard was awful. And he was taken off, I think, um, uh, uh, too, too late. Greenwood obviously came on. Greenwood, I thought, should have started. Pereira came on. If I'm honest, I would have started... Um, I, I didn't know Pog wasn't playing, but I would have probably started Pereira and Greenwood ahead of James and Lingard. Jesse Lingard needs to basically take some time off football. Because, and he looks, and even looking at him, he looks, he, he, he you know, you look at him, he's put on weight as a shore. He doesn't look fit. He doesn't look interested. He needs to take some time out of this Manchester United squad. And United need to go and find an actual number 10. Um, because he had a bad performance. Um, and and he, he gets a straight out zero for me. Um, we did not create anything. We could not break. We can't. If you're playing a number 10 in this number 10 role, you need to be able to create something. We did not create anything in that game whatsoever. So Lingard gets a zero for me. Lingard gets a zero. Um, 28 people watching, 28 people watching, but I need those likes. Like the vid, like the vid, like the vid. If you're watching, like the vid, like the vid, please really appreciate it. Let's get those likes up at least until 15 likes, 15, 20 likes, please. If you're watching, please like the vid. And please give us a subscribe to Red Devil Studio and follow us on Twitter at WeUnitedX. The socials are below. Um, uh, looking at your comment, looking at you, we're going just going through your comments. A lot, a lot of comments here. Um, quickly, um, Luke Shaw's regrets with that. Um, Don Ragnar about getting Grealish. Good shout. Um, X Eradicate says without McTom without McTominay, we look lost. Um, Don Ragnar again says, Dan James like the ki like kid, but he's one dimensional at this level. As you say, he needs space to run. He's a sprinter who happens to kick a ball. That's a fair point. But again, it's his first season. And this is again where coaching comes in. It's again, you know, let me know in the comments. How many players have Manchester United improved over the last six years even? Let alone this season. How many have improved? How many have improved? Red, De Red Devil Weekly, shout out to Red Devil Weekly. He's got on United channel as well. Um, head over there and like like and subscribe to his channel. He says, I don't know what to think when watching United. When I go into a game with no faith, we put in the same performance. When I have confidence, we fall to pieces. If I'm honest, I didn't really, as soon as Pogba was announced to not be in the squad, my confidence went. Because I looked at that team and I was like, it will be a miracle for us to win this game because we have no creativity in the midfield. And Arsenal had been playing well. And Arsenal were pressure. What I didn't expect was for Arsenal to... Arteta to have done his homework and to basically play a low block against this United side and hit them and 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 put them down. Um, Don Ragnar takes Zaha and Dubai back with Grealish. Eradicate what happened to Pogba? Um, apparently Pogba, according to Solskjaer, Pogba it's his ankle playing up again, and he doesn't know when he's going to be back. Um, so, you know, I don't know what's going on with Pogba. Frankly, um, I think it's very strange that a day before this game. Um, or day and a half, I can't remember, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer says, oh yeah, you know, Pogba will be ready, yeah, he's, he's good, he'll be ready, and then literally on the day of the game, he's like, no, no, Pogba is injured again. So, the board, if the board are listening to this message, um, please, 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 go out and find at least two midfield players quickly, because we do not have any midfielders to compete in four trophies. Um... Dum Dum Dewey, uh, Dewey Wambasak made a good tackle today. Daniel, be patient. Oli has a plan. I don't know what, let me know what plan that is, mate. If I'm honest, please let me know what plan that is. Because I don't see a plan right now. I don't know what the plan is that Oli has. Because if we're honest, if we're honest, if we look back, and let's be honest here, and I'm, I'm putting Lingard in there because he's, he's our banter player. Um, if If we are honest, 
when you look at the wins against Burnley, when you look at the wins against Newcastle, and I'm, I'm, I'm thankful we won those games. I'm always happy that we won those games. If you look at those wins, we won those games, not necessarily because we played well, but because we capitalised on Newcastle and Burnley's mistakes. For three of Newcastle's goals, they made mistakes. They passed the ball to us and we capitalised. Burnley, both goals, again, errors. If we play against a team that's compactly solid, okay, and has a plan, we lose. We probably had quite a bit of possession today. We probably had more possession in the second half compared to Arsenal. We lot and we'll lose. That's the reality of it. Um, Don Ragnar, if a player under Sarkson had issue of the pitch, he give them some time to sort their problems out and get ahead right. This way, Sarkson would focus on the on what needs to be done to win. I agree, and I think Lingon. If he has issues off the field, he needs time away from the squad. The only thing I guess you could argue is that probably the reason why Oli's saying is because he has no squad. What squad does Oli have? Um, Team Takagi 1, Lingardinho, 0 goals and assists in 29, and Pauli Pepe is a flop. I love this game. Um, I would I would chill out for a second because even though Arsenal have beaten Manchester United, Arsenal is still only 10th pl place. So just chill for a second, you know. So when you are now, when you now become fourth, third, etc. You're competing for trophies, then it's fine. But right now, you're still in 10th place, okay? So, I would just chill. It, this loss isn't the end of the world for Manchester United. We are still only five points from, four, from fourth, but, you know, it's the typical United. Chelsea dropped point today. Let's close the gap. Let's beat Arsenal. Nope, not going to happen. Um, we have upcoming games against Wolves and... Um, and of course, uh, City in the Carabao Cup, Wolves in the FA Cup, and we have Liverpool again. Liverpool at Anfield in January, um, and um, if if we get bantered by Liverpool at Anfield, absolutely bantered, um, you 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 got to consider about sacking Oli because there's no way you take this team. And to be fair, we did take points of them originally, but we shouldn't get bantered by Liverpool and at Anfield. We mustn't. Um, and Damon, do it's a five-year plan. It's about margins. That's football margins. I don't really know what you're talking about, mate. Um, I I assume um that this that you're trolling. You must be trolling. Um, you must be trolling, or maybe you're an Arsenal fan. I don't know. Um, Yashin Oli's appointment was due to his club status rather than his manager abilities. He can't track players like Klopp or Pep, as he's known to show as a manager no pedigree and a plan whatsoever. I agree with that. Um, to be fair. As I've said multiple times, and sorry, I'm, I'm speaking a lot. Um, I'm, I'll probably wrap this podcast up in a second. Is that Oli Gunnar Solskjaer for the first three months? We played great. We played brilliant football at, with an engine room of Matic, Pogba, and Herrera as a midfield, and it was brilliant, brilliant football. For some reason, um, and probably this had to do with what was going on behind the scenes with Alexis Sanchez's contract, with the money involved in that, with Herrera's contract stalling and injuries, and what have you, he changed the way that he played, we started playing 4-2-3-1, we started playing a different style, we didn't get any midfield backup, and suddenly, we played this very boring, counter-attacking based football, where we where we have no block button, there's no creativity in the middle of the park, um, he got the job based on three months of um, brilliant football, in my opinion, I think we played very, very well, um, and now, because of a combination of poor managerial decisions, poor board hierarchical decisions, and poor medical issues, um, we are now struggling in what is a very weak, weak league. Um, I'm gonna ignore Don. Don, I don't. I, he was laughing in this post because he knows how good he is. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that's banter, man. I think, I think he's just trolling, man. Um, Mikhail Mina says Lingard out. Um, I agree with that. Um, I think, yeah, we, ignore the troll. I think he's a troll. Um, Mikhail Mina, Pogba, you are a disgrace. I, 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 I mean, to be honest, I, I, there will be going to a lot be a Manchester United fans who are going to be blaming Pogba, but let's not, let's not, let's not, um, let's not, let's not, let's not be an Arsenal because Arsenal fans were were making Jack a scapegoat not too long ago, and now they're singing his praises. Um, I don't want to be like Arsenal Football Club that you just take a single player and make him a scapegoat. That's why I don't want to make Jesse Lingard a scapegoat. It's not him. I want to make. I want to. I want to look at. I want to look at the fact that we have a 
um, a system in our club that is from top to bottom, uh, you know, rotten to the core. Um, Terry, Dr. Lingard out, Fred is trash. Really? I don't know what, I mean, Lingard out, yeah, but Fred is trash. Um, I don't know what game you're watching, mate. Um, I, 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 um, Fred was number one created bone in his body. I mean, I would, I think, I think Fred has gone from strength to ten person. That's my opinion, and everyone's able to have the opinion. But to be honest, um, he's the only fit midfield that we have. Um, so even, like Matic, even if we wanted to, we can't because he's the only fit midfield that we have in this team. Um, there's nothing that we can do about that, unfortunately. Um, just going to, just going to like the vid, like the vid, like the vid. Let's get. We've got, I think, ten. We've got ten likes now. Um, I think that. Um, but we've got 25 people watching. Let's get to 20 likes, guys. Come on, 25 people watching. I want to get to 20 likes. Like the vid, like the vid, and like and share the vid with our last 10 minutes to go. So let me move on to play. Anthony Martial. Martial gets a six for me. No, yeah, Martial gets a six and a half for me. Martial, um, unlike Rashford, um, did actually try to create, did actually try to run at Arsenal defence, did get into many positions, but he just couldn't get through, unfortunately, which is typical because of the space. Um, but Martial did try. Um, he wasn't one of the worst players on the field, but I can sense the frustration in his face with, with, with the players that we have. Um, so yeah, I. What can you say about Anthony Martial, man? Um, he tried. Um, and you know, I feel that with a better coach again, um, you just see how under Van Hal we flourished. Then Mourinho's destroyed him. And Oli has kind of sort of brought him back, but semi not brought him back. Um, he had a difficult game, Martial. Um, I think he was getting a lot of joy on his side, but there was just too many, there was just not enough space for Martial to get into because much like Lingard and Daniel James, he needs space, but at least he can, Martial can create that space and finish. He was our biggest threat today, if I'm honest with the front three, um, but he but he struggled. So 6.5 to Martial. Um Marcus Rashford gets a five for me. Um, still lacks composure that Greenwood has. Um, selfish at times. I think he really he, he didn't. I don't think he tracked back as much to help Wamba Saka to be honest. Um, or who was on that side? Uh, well, sorry, Daniel James technically was on Wamba Saka's side, but I think he could have. Um, so he he was Rashford was on the left, so it wasn't he. So I think he could have. He do well, he didn't track back then definitely because he sh because Luke Shaw. And, and Rashford were way up, and and, the, and that defence was completely exposed. So he didn't track back, and he didn't really contribute much going forward. Um, and he was sometimes selfish and didn't make the right decisions when he was up top. Um, it was another poor showing for Marcus Rashford, who's had a decent spell of form. Um, but I give him a five um, right now. Um, I do. Um, let's go quickly back to um, the comments, guys. Um uh, after PSG, we all want Oli. It's our fault he is here, so stop moaning. Um, I'm going to ignore the, the, the troll, um, so I'm not entirely sure what, what, what you mean. Um, Tering, we need playmakers. We do need playmakers, but um, are we are we going to get them? Because we say we need, we need, we need, but are we going to get? I, I I don't think so. Um, uh, Aradicator says, says we, could pro pro we could probably get Ericsson. Honestly, I think that Ericsson will be a mercenary. Um, because you've got to think of it this way. Look at players, and players are like, why would I want to come to this club um, who are showing no ambition, who aren't competing for titles? The only reason why I come to United is for the pay packet. So United in a fix because a lot of up-and-coming players don't want to come to United because they know that their career is going to be destroyed. So the only players that will come are players that are either really young or players that are close to retirement who want you know, who feel that aren't won't get anything and so just want a nice pay packet. That's the reality, unfortunately. And that's why likes of Erling Haaland, up and coming player, snubbed because he's going to get better development at Dortmund. Um, Tagin, I'm sure Matic and Pereira have to go. Um, it's fair enough. It's like I said, we say that players have to go, but players have to come in to replace them. We said that Fellaini had to go. We said that Lukaku had to go. Who replaced them? Nobody. And the reality is that Lukaku and Fellaini both scored important goals for Manchester United. No one has actually come in and replaced the goals that Lukaku and Fellaini both scored. None of them. We don't like the way Fellaini plays, we moan. We don't like the way Lukaku plays. Great. Fine. Okay. They weren't replaced and their goals weren't replaced either. And we're, we're having the worst season that we've had 
in 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 decades. Even though we had bad players, but those were bad players. We're having the worst season, despite selling the Inquo Deadwood. We're having the worst season we've had in decades. But you know, but there we go. Um, Dong Magna Oli first few months was a new manager bound to shackle some moon up and Pogba's form in advanced position. There was nothing tactically special about what Oli did then. Um, for me, Dong Magna the thing for me is 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 was the midfield. It's more the players that he. It's that he played four three three in those months, and when you have. Matic just holding Herrera with, it, with basically being box to box and Pogba being in the advanced role with the shackles off, as you said, um, um, that created a difference because Pogba did give us that creativity. What changed is that he went from a 4 3 3 to a 4 2 3 1. Pogba now becomes a holding midfielder for some strange reason. We lose the tenacity of Herrera and we don't get the reinforcements. So I do think that there was a, a, a tactical change, a tactical change that I think was wrong. And three months to a new manager bounce is quite a long time, especially when you're you're beating PSG in Paris, you know. So, um, and especially when you look at like some Mourinho going to Spurs and stuff like that, etc. You know, it doesn't really go on for three months. Um, Terry Dutsu, I agree, Fed is fit, but I would agree with that. But I think we just need more than just fitness. Marshall Matic were the only two trying to create. I do I do agree that Matic was trying to create. For any people watching, man, there's a lot of people watching that tune in. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, though the, the show will be finishing fairly soon. We're, we're an hour into the stream. Um, so in the last, last five minutes, well, before we wrap this up, um, get your comments in, get your comments in. I will try and try and read them. Um, I do agree that Matic and Marshall were trying to create. Um, the point I guess I'm trying to make is that you know, I think I think the, the it's, it's just me being realistic, and the, the and the realism here is that we can't afford to leave Fred. I feel Fred has improved as a midfielder, but the rat is that we can't even get even if you thought that Fred wasn't great, that we need better than Fred, we can't get rid of him because we're down two midfielders already. Um, we we, we don't we're not in a position even to demand players to come to Manchester because of how things back as well. That's what I'm trying to get to across to a lot of these fans. The fans are listening is that. United are not in a position to bargain with players because we're seen as a team that stifles players and the only players that will come to United are players that are either in England, that are young, that want to maybe get develop their career a bit, or players that are old, that want to retire and get a bit of paycheck. That's it. You don't come to United right now to develop. Um, and that, and that, and that, that stifles what we can get. And when you have a board that can't get deals done, you know, we can't afford to let players go. Any players go. You know, we can't. Um, Marshall, I love the guy. Come on, him for assists that are down to centre. Yes. Um, Marshall's competition was placed. And fair enough. Um, Pepe had Luke Shaw for toast. I absolutely agree with that team to Kage 1. I do agree. Fred can't tackle when his shooting is dire. Um, I think Fred can tackle. Um, but I, I, I would disagree that, like... Uh, but I agree that his shooting is, is, is dire at times. You know, so, but... You know, this is a, this is the thing I'm saying. We're, we're looking at like Fred for, to me, from honest, wasn't even the worst player on the field. You know, Jesse Lingard, Maguire, the English contingent that we that seemed to get so much hype for the English press. Luke Shaw, Maguire, Jesse Lingard, the English contingent that gets so much, uh, and even arguably Rashford, but I don't think was great. This English contingent that gets so much hype were awful, were woeful did nothing whatsoever and they'll be spared from criticism so instead we'll focus on oh Pogba wasn't there oh Fred was uh oh Martial um he's is is too lazy oh Lindelof what's going on what about the English contingent that are overhyped and overpriced what about those players bar Wambasaka okay who's consistently okay everyone else trash 